a huge supposed leak of Doctor Who information covering season two and the spin-off The War Between the Land and the Sea has appeared on Reddit. So in this video, as well as going through what that leak says, spoilers potentially, I guess, although take it with a grain of salt, so if you don't want spoilers, maybe, maybe don't watch this video. Uh, I'll be sad to see you go, but you know, avoid the spoilers if you want them. But if you are curious, I'm not only going to be talking about what it says, but whether or not I think it each point is likely, and whether or not I think each plot development that it states is a good or a bad thing. And there is generally a mix in there, some things in there that I think are would be quite good for the show, some things I'm a bit more iffy on. So, let's get to it, shall we? Hello, welcome to Culture Filter. I am Phil, and this is all about the leaks that have just appeared, well, yesterday, I'm a little bit behind on this, actually, on Reddit. Let me know what you think about these leaks in the comments down below. Do you like what they're proposing is going to happen, or do you, would you really wish it didn't happen? Which bits do you like? Which bits don't you like? Do you think they're true? Let me know all of that stuff in the comments down below. Now, obviously, with anything leaks, it should be taken with a grain of salt, especially given that the source of this is simply Reddit. Anybody can post anything on Reddit. Now, according to the original poster, on Reddit, this is a collection of things they have gathered from various sources, of which they don't name. So, really do take this with a massive grain of salt. I just want to talk about it because I think some of the stuff in there is interesting, and I want to talk about whether or not I think they're good ideas or bad ideas. So the first bullet point is that Ruby won't be travelling with the Doctor for the majority of the season. She'll appear throughout, including in a Doctor Light episode, where she'll be working with Unit, she and the Doctor will reunite in the finale, however. This is kind of what we were expecting with Ruby, that she wouldn't be in the whole season, although we weren't entirely sure what form that might take. The way it says in this leak information that she reunites with him in the finale kind of makes it sound like she's not going to be with him the rest of the time, but I don't think that bit of it... I don't think that's true. And the reason is stuff that has been said in the uh, in the, the behind the scenes stuff about the fact that the three of them, Belinda, Ruby and the Doctor, do form at one point a team that they will be on screen together. And I don't think they mean just the finale. I hope they don't. I would like to see them interact a bit, bit more beside that. But what we might get is Ruby not traveling off world with the Doctor, that every episode she is in, it's set on modern day Earth, and that she does see the Doctor during that time, and she meets Belinda during that time, and then is again reunited with them at the finale. I think that's what we're gonna get. As for the Doctor Light episode, I guess that makes sense to, uh, you know, most seasons have a Doctor Light episode of some kind, especially with the Russell run seasons. So I, you know, if they're going to have a Dr. Light episode, let's focus it on Ruby. Let's give her the time to, to kind of shine again, like she did in 73 yards. Why not? And teaming up with unit kind of just makes sense. So I'm not necessarily against that, although I would have really liked to see her travel a bit with the, the TARDIS team of Belinda and the doctor and Ruby as a, as a sort of three person traveling, TARDIS team would have been nice more this feels more like Martha coming back in in season four which is a bit of a shame. The next one is that the series will include one returning monster but no Daleks or Cybermen so let's tackle the Daleks and the Cybermen first perfectly happy not to see them. I was really pleased that the Daleks got a proper whole season out with season one and I'm more than happy for that to continue for season two. I think that's a good thing. I think they'd need the rest. If they had been in season two, I wouldn't have been as annoyed as if I if they'd been in season one, but I, I am perfectly happy for them to sit out another season and then make a big return perhaps in season three. And look, there's been lots of talk about whether or not Disney are going to renew their deal. And having that in the back pocket of the BBC and Russell T Davis to go, look, renew for season three, because we're bringing the big guns back for season three. It's going to be big. We're going to bring the Daleks back. It's going to be huge. It might be a little that little morsel that Disney needs to go, okay, yeah, we will. We will stick around for another another season or two because we want to be there for the Daleks coming back and we think we can market that really well. So keep the Daleks for season three, absolutely. And you know, we've had loads of Cybermen in recent years. I don't think we need them anymore. 
um, for another few years. They can have a rest as well. Bring the Daleks back in Season 3. I am all for that. So what's the returning monster? Well, I suppose you, it could be the Sea Devils to kind of lead into and set up the war between the land and the sea. That could be a possibility. Um, but I would like to see something else. I would like to see some, them to surprise me. Like sort of they did with the Toymaker. Like they kind of did with Sutek, although I'd like them to do it better than they did with Sutek. But bring back a monster that we haven't seen since the 60s or the 70s. Bring back something that wasn't brought back in the revival up until now. That could be interesting. Hell, bring back the Candyman, why not? Series 15 will continue to lean into fantasy. I think we're all expecting this. I don't mind the fantasy element. I think it's a nice uh, tonal shift for the show and I quite like it. There's always been elements of fantasy to Doctor Who. They've been leaning into it very heavily in this last season. And, you know, I think it makes sense for that to continue for at least another season, given that uh, given that it will feel like it's more of an era of that then. I think I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm OK with that. I don't know what you think, but some people it seems to be a bit of a Marmite thing. Some people love the fantasy. Some people hate it. I quite like it. I'm fine with it continuing for another year or so. Episode two will take place in 1950s Miami with a focus on the paranormal. The setting, absolutely love it. Love sort of that like, kind of, we've had set photos from that already. I was kind of hoping this might be episode one and it might be Belinda's introduction episode. There is still the possibility of that because we could have episode one with Ruby and maybe Belinda doesn't get introduced in ep to episode two. That's still a possibility. And I kind of am hoping for that because I really want a companion from history. And I would really love Belinda to be from the 1950s. So if episode one could be one where we catch up with Ruby and then episode two is introducing Belinda. She's from the 1950s. Paranormal story. Excellent. Um, on board with that. I think this one is is pretty much spot on. It's going to be that we've had. We know that there's going to be an episode set in the 1950s. We've seen the set photos. So this one, I think, is probably spot on. The paranormal connection, more than likely, we're like it says, we're leaning into the fantasy again. So yeah, that makes sense. I think this one is true. Murray Gold has apparently written a uh, original song that will take place in a scene during a concert on an alien planet. This one, probably true. I think I am uh, indifferent to it. I kind of like when they have original songs. We had it scattered through the first uh, RTD era with like Song for Ten and the one that the, uh, uh, the one in the Dalek episode in Manhattan and then the one on the Titanic. You know, there's been these episodes where they have like songs scattered in, original songs. And for the most part, I've liked them. So I'm OK with that. And we knew that Russell has said in interviews that the musicality that has been around since, you know, uh, Church on Ruby Road is going to continue to be a part of the show. I'm fine with that. I like a bit of a sing song. I wasn't that keen on Twist at the end, although I loved it in the proms, but not so much in the episode. So, I, I you know, as long as it's a good song, go for it. Then we get on to some interesting things that might play into the story arc. So we've got uh, Jonah Hewer King, who is playing a role in season two. We already knew that. But this this says that he will be playing Mrs. Flood's grandson. Now, we know something is up with Mrs. Flood. She's some kind of... She, she breaks the fourth wall. She knows about the Doctor. She knows what a TARDIS is. There's something going on with her. So does that mean her grandson is special as well? Is there some... Is he, has, is he a menacing force like we suspect she might be? What's going on there? There's hints that he may get into a relationship with Ruby in some of the set photos. They're holding hands. So is she going to hook up with him because, you know, she meets him through her next door neighbor, Mrs. Flood, and they just get chatting and end up a couple? Or is it going to be more engineered? Is Mrs. Flood going to engineer this coupling so that... Uh, so that she can get to the doctor somehow. So I, in terms of this, this is probably the one that I think is possible, but I don't think it's certain. If there was anything in this that turned out not to be true, this is probably one of the top two of things, but we will see. I don't, in terms of whether or not I think it's a good or a bad idea, 
I it depends what they do with it, really. This is a really on the on the fence. I'm I'm on the fence with this one. I don't know, and it depends what they do with it. It could be good. It could be bad. Then we've got the Mrs. Flood will be the central antagonist for the season and the season finale, and the, the plot will involve her reshaping time and trapping the Doctor. I think. We all anticipated her being the central antagonist. We know that Russell, uh, with when he got the two-season order, planned out what was going to happen for those first two seasons. They've already been filmed. So, I, you know, he would have planned that together. And I think he was quite clearly setting up Mrs. Flood as the season two antagonist in the first season. That makes sense. Uh, in terms of time, uh, was it reshaping time? I think it's a time travel show. That's certainly a plot that could be interesting in trapping the Doctor. I just worry with uh, Russell's tendency to uh, rush endings and his endings aren't the most satisfactory things. There's often a, a big old reset button or a big old just like, hey, we do one thing and everything's solved type answer to his plots. And the whole trapping the Doctor thing gives me a little bit of concern about that, that he's going to get trapped, but then there's going to be one thing that happens that solves everything and suddenly he's untrapped and there's not going to be an interesting way to get him untrapped that takes some time um, and actually is part of a developed plot rather than rushed at the end. That's my worry with that whole trapping the Doctor thing, but we will see. Then we get the one that I really don't know how to feel about because I've got I've got two really conflicting thoughts about this and it's that Mel will die in the finale and she'll die sacrificing herself to save Ruby and Belinda. And I'm conflicted about that because I've wanted a companion to die for years, not in a malicious way, just because I think it would be really good, powerful drama and they always seem to cop out of it in the end in some way, even when they do kill someone they they kind of work around you know like in that scene with the toy maker oh you killed her oh but she survived for, for millennia as an immortal and then before going back to Gallifrey well that's all right then kill a companion please do but do I want it to be Mel I mean I was never a fan of Mel from the classic series I think she was a massively underused character underdeveloped kind of nothing of a character but she seems to be getting somewhere as a character within this new iteration. She seems to have a personality. She seems to actually use her computer skills. You know, I, I want to see more of her. I don't want her to die. So I'm conflicted on this. I kind of want to see them kill a companion, even if it's not the current main companion. It's still a companion. But I don't want to lose Mel. So I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure what I want out of this one, whether or not I want this to be true. Again, this is one that could be, it's one of the more outlandish ones, so it could not be true. I don't know. What this leak says it leads into, though, is quite interesting for the setup for the spin-off, though. And this is where the spin-off comes in, because it says this leads the Doctor wanting to somewhat distance himself from humanity, fearing that he puts too many people in danger. And that's a that would be a really interesting story arc for to end on for the season two of Shooty's character, but also really nicely sets up why the Doctor isn't there to help for the season two finale. If he's separated himself from humanity, doesn't want to be involved, takes himself off world, leaves everybody behind and just kind of goes off and they can't contact him because we know like they would contact him. We know that Kate has a time space telegraph thing that she's contacted the Doctor before on. Uh, she contacted Jodie Whittaker's Doctor using it. So given the whole uh, sea devil potential invasion thing, she would use that to contact the Doctor. So there needs to be a reason why he wouldn't respond. And this, this is it, I guess. And that kind of makes sense. So the next really interesting bit about this leak is that <laughs> what they do instead when they can't get hold of the Doctor, apparently they've got the Master in custody now, and they use him, and this is going to be a kind of redeeming arc. He gets to be the hero for once type thing for the Master. Uh, and again, I'm a little bit conflicted about it, because it compares it in the leak to kind of similar to Loki. And Loki's... I loved Loki. Loki was a great TV show. But they did kind of rush him going from villain to uh, redeemed and helping rather quickly and I don't want to see that for the master. We can't, We had a brilliant slow burn redemption in series 10 for the master when the master was Missy 
and that worked really well and then they kind of Chibnall kind of undid it with as much as I loved his portrayal Sasha Dewan's master didn't really make sense after Missy and it kind of feels like this might would have been better picking up after Missy rather than Sasha, Sasha Dewan's master I'm not sure how this is going to go I would I, I think there's interesting stories to tell in a master trying to be good and we've kind of had that so I'm not saying there's there, there could be a different spin on that and I'm interested to see what they do with it I just don't know if they can do it well and without rushing it this is another one which I think if anything turns out this is in the top two of things that might not be true so I'm putting it on the mm, I'm skeptical but could be interesting. Then there's who's playing him because Russell Tovey, according to this leak, is playing the master. We've had some on-set pictures, people that have um, uh, been on set and had photos with Russell Tovey seemingly when he's in costume and he's in very casual attire. Uh, so he's like t-shirt and, and jacket kind of thing. So I don't know if he was in costume then, but if he was, that's a very different take on the master. Kind of like almost an Eccleston take on the master. Very casual, very t-shirt and jeans kind of look. That might not be his costume. I might that might have just been somebody caught him out, out of out of costume. But if it was his costume, that's very different. I struggle to see in my head Russell Tovey as the master. But he's a good actor. I'm you know, I will always give somebody a chance, especially if they've proven they're good actors in the past. He might pull something out of the bag that's really surprising. And if he's playing a slightly different version of the master that's trying to be good and trying to be the hero, that could be, you know, it could work. I'm, this is the one I'm not sure about, the casting of this. But if there's one thing I like least on it, it's probably this, but I will always give it, a, I will always give any casting a shot, almost. And then finally that um, Gugum Rabrafa Raw is playing a scientist activist who's on the side of the sea devils so um yeah that that probably tracks to be honest we we haven't seen her in unit settings she doesn't appear to be in any kind of uniform it makes she looks more casual it makes sense that she's kind of a uh, civilian slash scientist yeah that kind of makes sense so i i'm fine with that 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 makes sense to have that kind of character in there so there we go. What do you think of all these leaks? Uh, take them with a grain of salt. But if they do turn out to be true, which ones do you like? Which ones do you not like? Uh, I'm a bit mixed on them. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And we'll see if any of these turn out to be true in, I don't know, some of them probably in about six months time. Some of them a, a bit later on in the year, next year. I'd also be really interested to see how the expanded media is going to cover this era when the Doctor is, you know, not dealing with humanity. That'll be interesting to see and one further can and catch up. If you want to find out what the Doctor, the 15th Doctor has been up to between TV adventures in the expanded universe in books and comics and stuff, then do check out this video, which is the latest episode of the Canon Catch Up series, which delves into where everything fits in the Doctor Who 15th Doctor's timeline. Mm -hmm.